Okay, so this is the A1 Mini from Bamboo, and I have been absolutely obsessed with 3D printing ever since I picked this up like a year ago. And my dad recently bought an H2S from Bamboo, so I figured it'd be kind of cool to do a comparison of Bamboo's most budget entry-level printer to the kind of features that the more premium printers will have. Now, the first thing actually about this is I think it looks quite nice. Like this looks like it could have been designed by Apple. Everything is just beautifully made, which they didn't really have to do on a budget entry-level printer. And I keep saying kind of budget entry-level printer, but in reality, this does a lot of stuff for the price, which is gonna be about anywhere from $220 to about $300. As of making this video, it's listed on sale from 300 down to 219, but yeah, anywhere from 200 to $300 which again is an insane price for a printer like this. Now, because this is an entry level printer, you're gonna notice right away, there's some things that you don't really get on the higher end printers, like the actual way this printer works. It's called a bed slinger model. And essentially what that means is it's literally going to sling the bed around as one of the axes for printing. So you get one axis from the uh, actual arm here going up and down. You get one from the print head going left and right and then you get one from the actual plate going forward and backwards. Doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be worse quality prints, it's just something to keep in mind. If you're printing tall prints, it might fly off the bed, which has happened to me. But again, for the price, I'm actually very impressed with everything about how this printer is built. It's actually quite heavy. So this is a pretty decently heavy uh, printer and it does that because it's mostly made out of metal. All of these parts are custom extruded aluminum. The actual print, like these gray parts are uh, plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap. It's a very premium feeling product. Not that you're going to be like messing with it all that much, but you don't feel like you got a cheap printer when you buy this. And it actually has a lot of the things that a higher end printer would have. It has auto bed leveling. It has flow calibration. It has vibration calibration when you're going to do a print. It does all of these things automatically and it's completely built into the actual printer itself. There also is a four color AMS up here on top of the print head, which is kind of cool. Uh, I will say this doesn't come with any sort of AMS or anything like that out of the box. You have to buy the upgraded kit for that. And technically you can only use the AMS light out of the box with this uh, printer. If you wanted to use uh, Bamboo's normal AMS or anything with uh, their heaters that also is like an AMS, you need an additional like adapter to make that work. I don't quite know why, but it seems like the AMS light was designed specifically for this printer, whereas the other ones weren't. I don't really understand how the difference would happen, but there is an adapter if you want to use any of their nicer AMSs. And then the last thing I think is super funny is when it does the filament like extrusion and purging, it does it over here on the side of the printer. And what that means is when it ejects that filament, it literally shoots off into the abyss, basically wherever it is on your desk or in your office. So my custom printed, or not custom, I just found this on uh, one of the three websites, but basically is a little uh, holder that attaches onto the end here and just captures all the filament inside here. So it's not flinging it all, all around your office, but it's kind of a weird design decision considering everything else is so well-rounded. Now, from my experience, it truly is a plug and play printer. That's kind of what they pitch this as, as you don't need to know anything about 3D printing. You can just plug it in and start printing things and it will just work. And from what I found, that's actually pretty true. I'm pretty sure it took me like 15 minutes to set this thing up from the like box that it shipped in. There's only a couple of things. I think you have to attach the filament like kind of spool holder back here. And then you have to connect some of these tubes into the actual like printer areas. But other than that, you really just plug it in and it can technically start printing. And the ways that you do print on this machine is there's actually two different ways, which are pretty much the exact same ways you could print on any other Bamboo 3D printer. You can print directly from the touchscreen here. There is a micro SD card that you can plug into the side of this printer. And then uh, this basically screen controls all of the settings and things that you could control directly from the printer. You can of course use other ways to do this, but the uh, screen can actually do quite a bit. Now, the other way is using their Bamboo software, which is what I primarily use. They have an iPhone app and they also have an app for your PC or your Mac. And that's basically gonna be the same software that is used across Bamboo printers, which is actually very surprising. They don't hold back on any of their like settings or anything like that. So you can do all the same things that you can do on a like higher end printer. On this one, obviously not you know with the hardware limitations, but the software, same thing. For example, on the A1 Mini or the H2S, two very different price point printers, you can do all of the same settings. You can change the speed that you're printing, the way your supports are done, the infill type, 
the amount of infill, all these different things can be configured within the software. Now, I usually set my print quality to 0.12 or 0.16. I think the default is 0.2 if I remember correctly, but I just like a little bit higher quality. It's gonna take longer, obviously. And then I change my infill type to a dynamic uh, infill type. And then the thing you're actually printing on, of course, is gonna be your print plate. And this is 180 millimeters cubed, which is about seven inches in any direction. And the plate that Bamboo gives you is this like textured kind of PEI plate. And it's fine. It just means the, the part that's printed on the plate is gonna have some texture to it. You can of course swap this out for a smooth plate if you want to, but they do not give you that by default. And to be honest, I thought the seven inch like print size was gonna be the biggest downside of this printer, but I actually don't think it matters all that much because in my opinion, the people purchasing this printer are gonna be like hobbyists, people just getting into uh, 3D printing, seeing if they like it or like getting it for their kids or just kind of using it to have fun with 3D printing. And seven inches is actually quite a bit of print space that you actually get on this thing. And even if it's not enough print space, in the Bamboo software, you can actually slice your models so you can add connectors to them by default that like gets built into the Bamboo software. So if you have a model bigger than seven inches, you can actually print it in multiple parts and then just connect it later. But of course that doesn't tell us anything about the actual printing on this thing. How actually is that? And it's quite impressive. They say that there's a silent mode that can print in 48 decibels. Um, I have no reference point for that. So here is a clip of it printing in just normal print mode. Now, obviously it's gonna be a bit more rough than like a nicer printer because it's not enclosed and it's also literally slinging this bed around as it prints and then moving this print head. So it's gonna be a little bit louder, but to me, it's not a deal breaker. There also is a low frame rate camera when you're printing, which will be right up here. And it's kind of funny, they list it as a low frame rate camera. And I think they do this because they don't wanna say how the frames actually are. And in my opinion, it's like one frame every like three or four seconds. I basically use it to watch my first layer of the print, make sure nothing goes bad and then I don't use it anymore. You can also have it do a time lapse, so you can have it take a picture every time a layer is finished and it does this automatically. Uh, I've never done that, but if you want to post those online or something, you can totally make little time lapses if you want to. The A1 Mini can actually print quite a few materials. So we can print PLA, we can print uh, PETG, which is right here, and then you can also print TPU. But those are kind of the three that they recommend. Again, I don't think it's that much of a limitation because people printing on this printer are not gonna be people who want to print in carbon fiber or anything like that. They're gonna be hobbyists or people getting into this and having fun with it. So in my opinion, if we hit PLA and PETG, that covers 85% of what people printing on this are gonna wanna use. And then technically the other filaments are not recommended. They don't actually say you can't use them. And basically that's everything else. Uh, ABS, ASA, uh, polycarbonate, and PET, basically due to the higher temperatures that it would need to get to to print those filaments. The print head gets to 80 degrees Celsius and the plate gets to 300 degrees Celsius, which is just not hot enough to print those higher end filaments. Okay, so here in front of me, I just have a couple of the 3D prints that I've done recently. Uh, this is like a prototype for something in our coffee shop, basically like a syrup holder. These are some aluminum extruded rails that I made. Obviously not uh, aluminum, but you know, you get the idea of what they're supposed to be. And then of course we have our little benchy for, uh, you know, benchmarking kind of generic stuff. And out of these three things, obviously they're all kind of different prints. The benchy is gonna require the most amount of things going on. The aluminum extruded rails printed vertically. So it's kind of like a testament to the bed slinger. And then this is obviously just the largest print that I did on it. Again, it's a pretty large print for such a small print plate. This is the only one with a visible layer line, and that's because right where the layer line is, is actually where the solid uh, infill stops happening, and then it starts doing actual like gyroid infill up top. But again, for a print this size on a printer of that price, it's pretty impressive. I do have to say the reason that these are different sizes is I did have one experience where the aluminum rail was printing, and this one, as you can see, it's shorter. Uh, it actually flung off the bed because it's a bed slinger, it literally shot it off the bed. The adhesion to the plate was not great. So it did happen to me. Uh, so just something to keep an eye out for. So that's gonna be the A1 Mini. If you're not printing anything that needs like actual perfect detail prototypes, which you probably wouldn't be doing anyways on a $200 printer, it can do, I mean, look at the size of these prints. The quality of these prints is absolutely insane. I'm actually very impressed with the A1 Mini and I would highly, highly recommend it to anybody who just wants to get into the hobby or is curious this is the printer for you.